Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to do some examples of permutation and combination questions. In the previous video, we talked about the formulas used for permutation and combinations, talked about what those things meant. We learned that permutation is an arrangement and combination is a group. Therefore, order is important with permutations. Order is not important with combinations. The two formulas we looked at for permutations was n factorial over n minus r factorial, where n is the number of items to choose from and r is the number of items chosen. Combination is very similar to that formula. n c r is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and then we also have an r factorial in the denominator. So that's the one difference of this formula compared to this one. But the problem that students have is knowing what formula to use when and how exactly to use it. Because it gets a little trickier with permutations because sometimes there will be repetition and sometimes there won't. So let's just go through a wide variety of examples that you might see and I'll talk about how you know what formula to use to solve. Our first example says how many teams of three people can be made from seven people? So you've got seven people and you want to choose randomly from those seven people a group of three. So the first question to ask yourself is whether order is important or not. Are we arranging these people in any way? These people do not have positions. Like if I was asking for president, vice president, and treasurer, so three particular positions, then arrangement would be important but we don't have arrangement here. We just are taking a group of people and we want to know how many different groups of people we could make out of seven people if our group size was three. So this is a combination. So in order to solve that, we have seven people and we're choosing three. So we use our formula, n factorial, so seven factorial over seven minus three factorial times three factorial. When you're solving this, your largest factorial in the denominator is 4 factorial. So we're going to write 7 factorial as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. I'll keep that 4 factorial in the denominator. And then 3 factorial will be 3 times 2. We're not going to bother with the 1. 4 factorial cancels. 3 times 2 is 6. That cancels there. So our answer is 35. There are 35 different groups of three people that we can select out of seven people. Our next example says, how many ways can the first, second, and third place be determined from a group of 10 racers? So it could be people, it could be horses. And in this case, the positioning is important. It's not just top three winners, it's first, second, and third. Because the order is important, this is a permutation. So we could use our permutation formula, which is 10 permutation 3. How many different ways can I get those top three positions? And the formula for that is 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial, which is 10 factorial over 7 factorial. We could then continue to complete this, but I'm going to use the multiplication principle instead because I find that easier and easier to understand. So in order to find a number of ways, I'm going to look at the three positions, first, second, and third. So how many choices do I have for the first place out of those 10 racers? I've got 10. After the first place is decided, how many choices then do I have for second place? Well, I have one less, so I have nine racers. Once first and second place are determined, how many choices is there for th third place? Now I have eight. So the number of permutations is 720. And we would get the, the same result if we used the formula. Let's continue. The next example says, how many possible five card hands can be made from a deck of cards? So a deck of cards has 52 cards. So if we were drawing or dealing five cards to somebody, how many possible five hand cards could there be? So the order doesn't matter. 
we're not putting these cards in a particular order necessarily. So it's not a permutation, it's not how many arrangements, it's just how many, how many groups of five cards are possible. So this is a combination, and in order to solve that we have 52 cards, and we're selecting five. Fairly large number, we plug into our formula, So now when I expand this, 47 factorial is the largest in the denominator, so I take 52 factorial and break it down until I get 47 factorial. I leave 47 factorial in the denominator, and I'm going to express 5 factorial as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. 47 factorial will cancel, 5 goes into there once, into there 10 times, 4 goes into there 12 times, 3 goes into there 4 times, 2 goes into there two times. So when I multiply all of this out, I get 2,598,960. That's how many possible five card hands I can deal out of from a deck of cards. Next question says, how many ways can we arrange 10 books on a bookshelf? So the arrangement is important. In this case, the order is important. So this is a permutation. So I could use my permutation formula. I'm taking 10 books out of 10, which would be 10 factorial over 10 minus 10 factorial, which is 10 factorial over 0 factorial, which is just 10 factorial, which is 3,628,800. Or I could have used my multiplication principle. So in the first position would be 10 to choose from, then 9 to choose from, and so on. So either way, I would get the same result. Of 3,628,800. Next question says the 649 lottery chooses six numbers out of 49. How many possible combinations of numbers are there? When they're selecting the six numbers, it really doesn't matter what order. The only thing that matters is which numbers they choose. So because order doesn't matter, this is a combination. We're selecting six numbers from 49. When I plug these numbers into the formula, I'm going to end up with 49 factorial over 43 factorial times 6 factorial. This is the largest factorial in the denominator, so 49 factorial will be 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 factorial. The 43 factorial will cancel, our other numbers can cancel, and the number of possible combinations of six numbers out of 49 is 13,983,816. In my next example, it says, how many ways can eight students be lined up for photos? So if they're lining up, they're lining up in a certain order. So order is important. Therefore, this is a permutation. We're lining up eight out of the eight students. So we can do it uh, using our formula. So eight factorial over zero factorial, which is eight factorial and the answer is 40,320. I could also do this as multiplication. It would be how many people, could, how many students could be in the first position? Eight, then seven, then six, and so on. Which is the definition of eight factorial. Now often you'll see questions where they state two students have to sit together. Then how many possible arrangements are there? So let's try that. So if we were asked how many ways can eight students be lined up for photos, if Jesse and Walter need to sit together or sit beside each other, it changes it. The best way to do this is to treat Jesse and Walter as one unit, as one, like one student. So Jesse and Walter, if I have Jesse first and then Walter, then what I'm having to, to determine is how can those seven be lined up? So it's a permutation of seven. Which is 5,040 if Jesse's to the left of Walter. But we could switch it up. We could have Walter 
to the left and Jesse to the right. And then we have another permutation of arranging seven items out of seven, which we know is 5,040. So we have 5,040 ways to line up those eight students if Jesse sits before Walter and 5,040 ways if Walter sits before Jesse. So in total, we have 10,080 ways to arrange those students, providing that Walter and Jesse sit together. Now I wanna take a look at some questions where repetition is allowed. We haven't had repetition. As soon as a student or a book or a number was used, we couldn't use it again. However, you're gonna see situations where we can use those items again, repetition is allowed. And an example of that is a WestJet reservation code consists of six letters. How many possible codes are there? When a letter is used, it can be used again in the code. So for each letter of the code, we have 26 possibilities. We can't use our permutation formula. We're gonna use our multiplication principle. The number of possibilities will be equal to, there are 26 letters, so 26 possibilities for the first letter, another 26 for the second, another 26 for the third, and so on. So there are 26 to the power of six possibilities of codes for WestJet reservations. And that equates to 308,915,776. The last question says a combination lock has five numbers and each number can be any digit from zero to nine. How many possible combinations are there? Be careful with the word combination because this is not a combination question, even though we're working with combination locks. This is actually a permutation. However, repetition is allowed. Once you've used a digit for your first number on a lock, you can use it for other uh, numbers on your lock as well. This is the same type of example that we just did. So we have five different numbers and each number we have 10 digits to choose from. So we can ten, choose 10 for our first number, 10 for our second, 10 for our third, 10 to our fourth, and 10 for our fifth. So we have 10 to the fifth possibilities of numbers for that combination lock. So we can use this formula when we're doing permutations with repetition, such as this example and the one we did previously. The number of possibilities will be n to the r, where n represents the number we can choose from. So in this case, we could choose 10 digits, and r is the number of times we're choosing. I hope these examples help you and that you get more comfortable in determining when you're using a combination formula, when you're using permutation, or when you're using permutation with repetition. I always like to look at these questions logically, and that helps me determine how to set it up. Two.